Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play the entirety of this video without any interruptions, and then I'll go back and talk about things that are going on to better explain what's going on, and talk about things that I think that were done right and or done wrong. Without further ado, here we go. Well... Hello, I'm Captain Stacy Spell, Commanding Officer of Media Relations Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. This critical incident community briefing is intended to provide you with information about a law enforcement related injury, also known as a Leary, that occurred in Newton Division in the City of Los Angeles on February 11, 2022, at around 11.21 p.m. A Leary is a use of force incident where an individual requires hospitalization. You're about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case so you can have a better understanding of what occurred based on what we know right now. The LAPD conducts very thorough use of force investigations, which typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. We're still at the very early stages of this investigation, which can often take up to a year to complete and our understanding of the incident may change as this additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies in the law until all the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution. The images and information you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Newton gang enforcement detail officers were completing a traffic stop in the area of 55th Street and Long Beach Avenue when they observed a silver Jeep Wrangler with tinted windows driving erratically. As the officers drove towards the vehicle to monitor it, the suspect's vehicle accelerated and quickly became involved in a significant traffic collision with a large flatbed truck. As the officers approached the accident scene, the suspect's vehicle accelerated away from the scene and officers initiated a pursuit. The suspect was later identified as 25-year-old Jose Huerta. Here is the radio broadcast for this incident. Person George 30, show me code 655 Alameda, TC. Um, give me some additional uh, units, sir. Verify involved. Negative. Sergeant George 30 is code 6 PC, non involved, 55 in Alameda, requesting additional units. George 30, I'm in pursuit, PC, hit and run, felony suspect, southbound Alameda for 55. The pursuit continued for approximately 11 minutes until the suspect stopped and exited the vehicle and began to run away from the officers. The officers chased Huerta through a park and into a neighborhood where one officer caught up to him and used his body weight to take him down on the grass lawn. Unbeknownst to any officer, the suspect was holding a 10-month-old infant. Officers were immediately able to pick up the infant and secure him. Huerta, who is the infant's father, was subsequently taken into custody without further incident. The pursuit was captured on the officer's digital in-car and body-worn cameras. Most marked vehicles assigned to patrol have a camera mounted inside which activates when the emergency lights are turned on. The camera can also be manually activated. These digital in-car cameras have a buffer of video without audio. Upon activation, the camera goes back one minute and starts recording. Body-worn video cameras are used by most officers assigned to field duties. They are worn at chest level and capture a general perspective within line of sight from that angle. The angle of the camera prohibits viewers from seeing everything the officers saw and experienced. Upon activation, both audio and video will turn on. However, body-worn video cameras have a buffer of video without audio from the previous two minutes prior to activation. This feature is designed to capture incidents that occur suddenly where an officer doesn't immediately activate the camera. Here is body worn and in car video from officers involved in this incident.
Burn, burn, for California. Get a little closer. Los Angeles County Fire Department treated Huerta at scene. He sustained no injuries. The child was transported to a local hospital where he was treated for a small skull fracture to the right side of his head. The child also tested positive for cocaine and fentanyl. He was admitted to the hospital and underwent further testing. He was later released to his mother. The cause of the child's injury has not been determined. However, the incident is being investigated as a categorical use of force incident because the force used cannot be ruled out as the cause of the injury. Investigators recovered narcotics, three unloaded 9mm gun magazines, and a large amount of cash at the scene and booked them as evidence. On February 15, 2022, the Los Angeles County District Attorney filed the following charges against Huerta. One count of felony child abuse, one count of felony evading, one count of felony possession of narcotics for sale, and one count of misdemeanor hit and run. Josue Huerta is a 25-year-old resident of Los Angeles. In the next several months, the LAPD will continue to investigate and analyze this incident. We will continue interviewing any new witnesses that may come forward and complete any forensic tests. After the investigation is complete, our Critical Incident Review Division will forward their findings to the Chief of Police, who will make his recommendations to the Civilian Board of Police Commissioners. The Board will evaluate the evidence to determine whether the officer's tactics and use of force in this instance met the high standards expected of all LAPD officers. If you would like more information on how the LAPD investigates okay. <clears throat> all serious uses of force. Oh, the suspect is a big piece of shit. So they had noticed this vehicle driving erratically and uh, went to go follow them. Probably to, you know, capture on camera all their erratic driving um, to have it as evidence and then initiate a stop. While following him and, and gathering this information, uh, he crashes out and then leaves the scene of an accident. The pursuit goes on and it lasts for over 10 minutes, but the time splice in it where... Um, when they first take off and then get into the end of it, it's pretty quick. <clears throat> so think about just how long 10 minutes is. So this guy's been going on for a while. And at some point, his rear passenger side tire is deflated. No idea if this was a result of spike strips or if this was something that occurred during the accident. And his tire just ended up going flat anyway. But he, at some point, incurred this flat tire and continued to flee from the police in it. And... Drop this volume down, it's a little loud. No. My mouse is not working. Um... So I don't know why he chose this spot in particular to get out. I don't, of course he, he says at the end that he's taken the kid home. So I don't know if he's in his neighborhood, he recognizes the area now, he's going to bail out on foot and think he can outrun the police. 
and get to home base and he's going to be safe. Or he knew that he couldn't be on the road any longer and just thought that this would be his best avenue. Um, at first I thought maybe he, you know, he had thought he could drive through this. I don't think that was the case because I think as soon as he slows, he gets himself ready to bail out of the vehicle. Because as soon as this thing hits, he is out. And I just, there's just no way that um, this dude would have been able to dismount the vehicle that fast and be to the front of the hood as the vehicle is still bouncing off the bouncing off the poles right here. So he had of he had to have uh, been getting out of the starting the process of getting out of the vehicle uh, probably here at the the bump sign or just just a tad bit past it. Obviously, the police want to clear the vehicle before they start running past it. There could be someone in there. And as they run past it chasing this dude, they could start opening fire on the police and shoot him in the back as they go by. So they have to clear the vehicle first, and they clear it pretty good. Or, or pretty quickly. So this guy... <laughs> This dude's the runner, and he starts off, and this officer, who is just very kind of slowly, nonchalantly getting out of his car, is in his way, and he's like, not now, chief, I'm in the zone. <laughs> Pushes this dude out of the way, and just fucking, like, roadrunner. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> and then he passes. One, two, three. I got him. I got him. I got him. Passes all three officers. Now that little noise there. I don't know what that was. It kind of sounded like him in a way um maybe that was you know his buddy right there he just went by and you know he's making some kind of funny noise um i, I don't know <laughs> i don't know what that was it could have been dog somewhere in the yard I, I have no idea but this dude this dude's a runner so he passes up all these officers i got him i got him i got him and he's confident in his ability he knows he's a runner Not only does he pass them all up, but he closes the gap and gets on this dude. Let's back it up again. Stop! Please! Stop! So as we pause, play and pause, you can kind of see the baby's legs right there. But this is the luxury of being able to pause, rewind, play, pause, rewind, play, pause. You don't have that in real life. So it's, it's, it's very plausible the officer didn't even recognize what this was. And I'd say he probably did not recognize what it was. Back it up some more. Stop! Please! Stop! Go to the ground, and the second assisting officer comes up. <laughs> yes, I hope that fucking hurt. Ooh, let's see that again. I mean, <laughs> fucking. Ugh. Stop! Stop! Yeah, 
he fucking god I, I hope that fucking hurt him so bad the fact that this dude took his own baby and tried to use his own baby as like a as a body shield essentially thinking that the police aren't going to do anything to him if he has a baby in his arms that's the sign of a real sick twisted piece of shit if you're going to take a baby and try to use it as a shield in hopes that the police are not going to use any kind of force against you you don't deserve to live when this officer fucking lands on him on his head I hope it fucking hurt for weeks cause that baby was hurting as soon as they hit the ground baby's crying baby end, baby end up having a, a skull fracture <coughs> and the baby's a baby so there's no way to, to fully tell if um, there was any kind of significant brain damage or anything I mean, there's some ways you can you can tell, um, but no way of knowing if this is going to affect the baby in some way. They probably won't be able to find out until, you know, years later. There are too many people like this who exist in this world. They would take their own baby and try to use them as a body shield. Unfortunately, despite him being charged with what he was charged with, there stands a really good chance, really, really good chance that he'll still be able to be around the baby, that the state will not forever revoke his ability to be around that baby. Generally, states are pretty reserved with that. And it's amazing how many second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances, sixth chances, seventh chances the courts give people when they neglect their own children. It is appalling. It really is. And the, and the sad thing about it is nobody knows that this shit goes on. Because the juvenile system is shrouded in so much secrecy. It's like it's the fucking CIA. Nobody talks about it. You can't get court documents for juveniles. Or anything relating to juveniles in family court. So there's no way for the public to know how many pieces of shit like this motherfucker exist. Unless it's something in this context where it's, it's caught on body camera or, or whatever. If it's stuff within the home that ends up getting reported, there's just, there's no way to find it out. Until the people themselves get charged with stuff. And even then, some of the details aren't all there for the privacy of the child. And they get multiple chances. Multiple chances. It's sickening. It really is. It is sickening. But that's what you get with trauma-informed care and not wanting to break up families kind of bullshit mindset. Personally, um, I think it would be better in some children's interest if they were just completely 100% removed from certain families once those families got in the quote-unquote target uh, sites of a um, child investigator. There are, there, are, there are so many juveniles in this country who, if you could at birth or in the, the infancy and toddler stage, be able to remove them from their family completely and put them with a better family, their chances of making it in life and not becoming a criminal offender like their dirtbag mom and dad, 
they could actually make something of themselves. But because the courts fail every single fucking time, they end up leaving these kids with their dirtbag parents. Kids being raised by dirtbag parents are more likely to become dirtbags themselves. Just the same as if you had a clans member raising his own kid. Do you think a clans member's kid is probably going to be in the clan or share some of the same beliefs? Absolutely. So when little dirt dirtbag parents raise their little kid, those kids end up being dirtbags. It's just a vicious cycle. It's never ending. And the courts keep allowing it to go on. The Child Protection Services, Cabinet for Family Health, whatever terminology it is, people who are supposed to be looking out for the interest of juveniles, they end up dropping the ball. They hire unqualified people. They hire a bunch of bleeding heart kind of people, a bunch of softies, a bunch of really just a bunch of liberals who, who, who don't have a strong backbone in them. They neglect to, to take anything on. Their caseloads are extremely crazy. And then whenever they do decide to pull the trigger and take a child out of the home, the courts end up giving the dirtbag parents multiple chances. It's sad. It is, it is truly freaking sad. The mom that they released the kid to, I have, I would, I would not be surprised to find out if mom is involved in the same kind of lifestyle as dad would not be surprised with what he's involved in. It's almost a given that mom is just as bad as him. I mean, I seriously doubt that this dude probably found a doctor or a teacher or some other respectable person to be the mother of his child. So mom, I would not be surprised if it information came out that mom is a piece of shit just like him. That baby, unfortunately, in my opinion, has no chance of success in life. Because of who its parents are. And we'll probably... I mean, there's really no way of knowing what the baby's name is. I mean, I'm sure if I took the time to try and find this guy on social media, find his wife, I'm sure I'll find the name of the, of the baby. But trying to, to remember that name for the next 18 years... And then check up on them again is not very likely. Like 18 years from now, I'm I'm probably gonna completely forget about this video, and not even know that I did it. But if I could somehow find out the kid's name, and 18 years from now look him up, or let's, let's say uh, realistically uh, 25 years, you know, let's let him get to about age 25. If I could wait 25 years. And go look that baby's name up. I guarantee you that it's probably going to have an arrest record. Probably have multiple arrests. Probably some of the same stuff that dad's been arrested for. Would not be surprised. And if that, you know, if that baby could be taken away from him. And be given to a good family. You know, a couple who... Who can't have kids on their own and they want a baby. And they would be able to provide for that baby a good chance. And that baby could be anything. It could be a doctor. It could be an attorney. It could be a CEO. It could be fucking president. It could be anything. 
could be anything and be completely opposite of what its piece of shit parents are. A lot of, there's a lot of people who are like that too. All your gangbangers. Think about, you know, in your area, one of the worst gangbangers there are. There's no way to to be able to say for sure that it could happen. But if you could go back in time and uh, that, that worst gangbanger in your town, if you could remove him from his home at, after birth and put him in a good home, They'd never leave. They 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 would never lead a life of gangbanging crime. The chances of them leading a, a life of gangbanging crime is it would be extremely low. So there are a lot of people, in my opinion, that they are products of their environment. Now, some of them, it, it is it is a uh, um, just nature. Um, chemical imbalances in the brain, etc. Uh, they're just they're just not right, and they're going to be doing stupid stuff. But some of them, some of them, you know, having conversations with some of these criminals, some of these gangbangers, um, some of them are smart. They really are. Um, some are dumb. I mean, they're some are actually dumber than a box of rocks, and it's no surprise that they're involved in the lifestyle they are. But there are some who are actually legitimately smart. And if they had a different upbringing, a different home life, then chances are they probably wouldn't be in the situation they are. But once they get to that situation of them being a gangbanger, there's really no rehabilitation for them. I mean, they are who they are. So at that point, they're they're pretty much a lost cause. The only time people really have a, a, a major change in their life um, is really when they get a lot older, when all the testosterone gets out of the body and they're no longer some raging young boys. Funny how older age changes a person, changes your way of thinking and everything. Anyway, so this is his loot. Um, so they've laid it out on some cardboard paper here. Or not cardboard paper, but... Um, it looks like um, construction paper kind of stuff. Like what you'd see a grocery bag made out of. Don't know what that top left thing is that says under driver's seat. Um... It could be some kind of bag of drugs. Uh, not really sure what that is. Um, the bike path. So apparently as he was running, he he ditched some stuff out of his pocket. There's one magazine and then a bag of pills. On them they found a couple bags and some money. In the trunk of the car they found some more money. The front seat they found some more money. Bags and a fanny pack it looks like the left rear floorboard another magazine and then in the center center congle <laughs> um I, I don't i don't i'm assuming that that is supposed to be console but it literally looks like it's spelled congle c o n g a L. That could be an S. Console. <laughs> Somebody don't know how to spell. And a bunch of drugs and a magazine. So the dude's obviously a drug dealer. I I would be really curious about where the gun's at. So um you know, on the bike path, they found the magazine and the drugs, and then they found two more magazines in the car. 
what are these magazines going to? Where's the gun or the guns that these things go to? I'm sure they, they searched as best as they could there on scene. But there's a possibility that gun was tossed somewhere on that scene. You know, he could have pitched it up onto a, a roof without them seeing. Um, and, of course, we don't get to see the entire 11 minutes of the pursuit. He could have threw it out the window when he was taking a turn, and it slid across the ground and landed up under a car, and no one got to see it. Who's going to find that gun? Some other kid? Hopefully it's not loaded. And whatever the gun he did have, chances are it's probably stolen. So this happened in February 15th, 2022. He's been charged with all this stuff. No telling what his bond is, but chances are he's probably at home right now. Probably home with that little baby. Because that's the way the court systems work. They let people out way too early. Dude even looks up like a straight up piece of shit. So this is obviously not an a, a, a officer-involved shooting video. Uh, that Those are the bulk of the videos that I do. Um, but sometimes it's nice to throw something else in there um, to be able to provide commentary and perspective on other things. And really just to, to talk about the kind of scum that's in society. You know, for people who don't work in the public safety industry, you really have no idea the kind of people that live around you. If police departments were required to post every incident that they go to on their website, and provide some summary and details of it and actually post videos of their encounters on a day-to-day -day basis not just these officer involved shooting videos but you know actually post the day in day out stuff people would would quickly find out that there's a lot of shitty people out there. A lot of shitty people. As I said, I, I would have I would not be surprised to find out if this dude is already back at home, not even in jail, and I would not even be surprised to find out if they end up amending these charges. You know, I could I could probably see the child abuse charge going away. His attorney could argue, but well, he didn't. He didn't injure the kid. It was the officer. The officer knocked him down with the kid. The officer shouldn't have done it. Blah blah blah. The hit and run. Will uh, that'll probably stick. The the evading it'll stick. The narcotics. Who knows? If he has a good enough attorney, he might be able to fight that one some. And if he, even if he does get full convictions on all these, I don't, I don't know what their their statutes are down there. But let's just let's just say that you know each of these is a felony. Well, I'm sorry, all three felonies and a misdemeanor. Let's just say that each felony carries five years. Okay, so he could be could be looking at fifteen years. Would he ever do that? No, they would never do that. 
they would not fully sentence him to the full 15 years. Although he would potentially have, or, or hypothetically, you know, if he could be facing 15 years, they would send us, send us him to something lower, like five years. And then he wouldn't even serve the full five years. He'd probably serve a year and a half and then get out early and go on probation or parole. <laughs> and then go right back into doing the same shit he was doing when he went in. That's the other thing the public has no idea that goes on. The amount of times these people are released back out into society. If the courts were forced to have to post online all the case stuff and provide summaries of things, then the people would be appalled to find out how many of these people who have serious crimes are just given, being given little slaps on the wrist. No real justice is being served in this country. And it has not been for, for several years now. When, you know, I, I teach firearm stuff and I talk about, you know, defending yourself. I bring this stuff up. If the person that's coming to rob you, bug you, burglarize your home with you in it, whatever. If they kill you, for one, depending on where you're at, there could be about a 50-50 solve rate. 50% chance they could catch the guy. 50% chance never catch the guy. Be an unsolved murder. If they do catch him, there's absolutely no guarantee that they would ever get a murder charge or ever see the death penalty. Even if they did get convicted of murder, there's really no guarantee that they could ever be given the death penalty. But no guarantee that they'd ever get to the murder charge. Probably something lesser, you know, depending on the state, whatever it is, you know, it could be attempted murder, it could be, uh, or not attempted murder, it could be um, uh, manslaughter, reckless homicide, um, some variation of one of those. And then the time served. Each state's a little bit different on, you know, the time frame on those things, but someone could be given five years for uh, a reckless homicide charge and then be out in two. And then while they're in the prison, there's really no punishment. They get access to Cokes and chips and candy bars and drugs and alcohol. Free cable television. Hell, some prisons are giving them tablets. Smart tablets so they can check their fucking email. <laughs> How would that make you feel? Some little punk ass son of a bitch come up, rob you, kills you. Get sentenced to five, serves two, and while they're in... They get a tablet that was probably paid for by some of the taxes that you had to pay from working for a living. Or your surviving family, their taxes have ended up paying for this shithead to have a tablet so he can check his emails. <laughs> Those are things to think about when uh, we train for self-defense and... The potential of having to apply deadly physical force. Not much else to talk about on this. I feel like I've kind of gone into a little bit of rant mode. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday Quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.